coming up on Digging Into the Future. I think we'll see innovation from the emerging markets because they are not they are not dependent upon legacy infrastructure uh, like some of the more uh, mature areas of the world. Hi, we're uh, fortunate today to have uh, Carrie Gilder, the CEO of uh, Colt, joining us uh, from London. And uh, Carrie comes to us um, with a background both on the equipment side, where she worked at Sienna for many years, and, uh, and then obviously coming into uh, to Colt in the last 12 months. Uh, very, very uh, dynamic leader who's, who's shown uh, an ability to operate through this COVID period. Looking forward to having a great discussion about what's going on in Europe today, but also looking forward into the next 10 years, what's going to happen. So uh, welcome to Digging Into the Future with us, Carrie. So, Carrie, how are you? I am great. As you can tell, the sun is shining in London. It's always a good, uh, it's always a good start to the day when that happens. Uh, it is, uh, it's a rare thing in London, I guess. Uh, and, and you've got the um, unique... Uh, reality that you've actually had to be a, uh, a COVID CEO for your, your first, uh, first year. So how's that been? And uh, is it a lot different than uh, when you're at uh, Siena trying to, to run the, the business uh, when you could actually see people and shake hands and have meetings and lunches and, and stuff like that? Is it, is it that much different or do you find it uh, the new normal? I do think it's the new normal. I think after being a year in a remote working situation across the globe, I think we've all developed new habits. And so those habits, many of them will not go away. They will stay with us. And I think in some ways that's a positive. Uh, it's, it's helping create a more sustainable environment for ourselves as we don't commute. We're more productive. That's been proven. Uh, at the same time, though, I have to say, I would like to have that 3D engagement with some of my employees and be able to walk down the hall and hear the chatter as to what's going on and just have that vibe around me. But in COVID, I've been able to reach more people, I think, than I would have if I was still reliant on that 3D world. So in some ways, the business that we've grown up in, communications, has enabled me to actually have more outreach than I think I normally would have, have had. Let's switch to sort of the industry stuff. Um, you're one of the first companies actually to be a power player both in the data center space and the telco space. There are also people who think that telcos and data centers will go up the stack, so actually getting to the software layer. Um, do you see that happening or do you see it sort of staying at the infrastructure layer? I mean, it's. I've always believed that it's hard for telcos to, to, to climb that, that stack. Uh, you know, many tried and, and failed over the years. Um, but actually, it seems like Colt has done some of that to a certain extent, and there are success stories. So I, I, what do you think? Do you think uh, there will be this integration with the ICT sort of stack, or, or what's, what's your thoughts? I think that there has to be some integration with the ICT stack. I think that... If I look at the strategy for Colt, we're, you know, we're definitely making uh, bets and putting investments around uh, software-defined networking, net, you know, NFV, we're looking at on-demand, we're looking at quantum computing, uh, 5G and what that brings uh, as far as uh, ensuring that we have the reporting and analytics associated with that. All of that is software development. And so, you know, I think when SDN started to become a reality, this was pre-pandemic, it started to become more uh, accepted by the enterprise and pandemic just accelerated that because we needed a remote solution that you could again, point and click and have that easy button to turn up and turn down services and have that flexibility. I think that that turn up and turn down of service is going to start to blend between the infrastructure itself, whether that be a firewall or a uh, you know a, a routing uh, a service as a, a VNF on a, a universal CPE device, 
or whether it's getting into that higher workload and application space where you're actually driving some of the analytics and the insights that are required for CIOs to make the right decisions as far as how they're supporting their customer base you know, throughout their enterprise. So I do think that there is going to be an adjustment. And I think those that uh, make the determination that software is here to stay and it's a, uh, it's a fundamental function of how we are going to engage as a communication service provider in the future, I think those companies will survive. And the other companies I think are gonna have a hard time. Yeah, and it's, it's, I, I think it's always the trade-off because I think a lot of us always think that the enterprise will actually do the secret sauce, right? So you always think that the bank will buy the data center space, the network, and then they'll uh, do the integration. And so I think it's, it is interesting because I think there is an argument to say that as, as businesses tend to look to outsource more and more, they'll actually, and also they don't want to spend the money, right? I mean, I think it's becoming a very uh, commoditized and, and bandwidth is very important and the software is maybe not as important anymore. And so I think it is interesting, I think, whether telcos actually make that jump or not. And uh, it's more of a challenge, I think, because also you have to think about it from a global scale. Um, so, I mean, what do you think, because do you, how much do you do in the emerging markets? Do you see that uh, this will be a trend in the emerging markets or do you think it's gonna be still the pipe and, and uh, you know, sort of selling pipes and hardware um, in, in the emerging markets? Yeah, I, I, I think it, ac it absolutely, I think we'll see innovation from the emerging markets because they are not, they are not dependent upon legacy infrastructure uh, like some of the more uh, mature areas of the world. So we'll see more mobile apps. We'll see more of that, again, that easy button, you know, where it's not just the technology that enables it and you have this Amazon-like platform you know, for communication services down to an SME. But I also think that we're going to see some advancements when it comes to procurement, when it comes to contracting, when it comes to enabling SLAs. And I think we're going to start to see a shift in the requirements around those SLAs and they'll be more experience-based. And I think that's where you're going to start to see a big change because that environment, that point-click environment, uh, whether you're in South Africa or you're in uh, India, I think you know that mobile world is what actually enabled their uh, ex the, a lot of the SME existence. Yeah. And so that capability and that experience of having that point-click capability is going to absolutely. Um, drive you know, innovation in this area. So uh, we we do participate in the emerging markets uh, within Colts. You know we operate in more than you know 32 countries around the world, and that's what we absolutely are seeing is that innovation. You know that kind of non-legacy thinking coming from the emerging markets. So thank you to our audience at PTC, awesome. Carrie Gilder. Uh, all the way from London. We really do appreciate you taking the time uh, today with us. So thank you very much, Carrie. And we'll look forward to seeing you in Hawaii and, uh, and spending some time face-to-face, -face, uh, hopefully by January of this year. Thank Definitely. You, Hearing and sensing those uh, waves coming at us while we're drinking a pina colada, I'm, I'm all about that. So look forward to that as well. Thanks, Bill. Thank you, Carrie.